Hi everyone. Good evening, guys. Good evening, Vinod. Yeah, very good evening. Okay, so we created uh, Docker containers. Okay, so all these things we done right. Any doubts, guys, so far? No, we not. Okay, fine. So let me start the uh, container here. So I'm starting the container, Sudhir container, sudo docker start uh, Sudhir. Okay, so now the docker is, uh, the container is running. Okay, it is already running now. No. About three days ago, yeah, it is running. How come? Oh, okay. I didn't stop the instance actually. So that's why it is running us. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't stop the instance. Okay. So that's why the container is also running. Okay. If you stop the instance, no, the container will stop because the container is sitting inside host operating system. If the host operating system is not running, how the container will run? Impossible, right? So uh, the, the host operating system is stopped. Container also Fine. Now, uh, so what we are doing here, once we enter into the container, we are performing our tasks. Okay, without entering into the container also, we can do it. Like suppose like this, sudo docker exec. This is the command we use here, execute. And Sudhir container, and what you want to execute. Suppose I want to create a file in the Sudhir container. Okay, touch um, where you want to create the file. Okay, so in the home directory, I want to create one file. The file name is something, okay, sample.txt. Okay. See, I'm sitting in my host operating system only. From here, I'm creating a file inside the content. Now go on classic sudo docker attach sudir. Okay, now you can see see, uh, no, no, here, not here, or in the home folder and click it. Okay. Go to the home folder. See here, you can see sample.txt files. So, like this, not only file creation, suppose you want to see the. Um, so, let me let me come out from this. How to come out? Control PQ, read escape sequence. And here, you can give like this also. Suppose you want to see the system name or post name. Post name will be the container ID only, no? It was to host name. Why? When it is running, okay. I think in Ubuntu, which is not, I think Ubuntu is not showing, not Ubuntu, it's a Fedora, no? Fedora is not showing.
the host see not only this okay host name it is not taking the command it is not taking it at all. fine um suppose i want to apply uh, not this suppose let me go with that. i want to update something okay um yum update or m install detail view okay Come on, it's taking time. I'm logging out. Okay, it's taking time, guys. Okay, <clears throat> so like this. Without entering into the container, okay, you can update or whatever you want to create a file. Like this, you can pass the commands also. Okay. So for this, we are using EXCC. Okay, not uh, everything, okay, small, small things if you want to uh, you want to uh, do in the container. So you can pass without entering into the container also by using EXCC.
Okay, so uh, let me launch one more container. See, uh, you can give version also. For containers, you can mention which version of the container you want. Like I'll show you this time. Uh, sudo docker uh, run, 
iphone iphone name name of the container is urban okay just i'm giving urban and suppose uh, let me take interactive tab in there and image name is suppose urban 2 okay so if you give like this it will take the latest one whatever the image is available in the docker hub that image only it will take okay sometimes you want a specific version you want to download the specific version then you can give the version like this uh, colon version name i mean like 18 point or 20 point uh, 0 4 like this you can, you can mention now see it will download if that version is available it will download okay but sometimes see so the ubuntu versions uh suppose if you see ubuntu one to download i think 22 is the latest version here on the official website one to 22 is the latest but whatever the versions are uh, available in the docker hub that only you will get as the latest guys if you not mention okay So you can see here the downloads. Ah, 22, 23 also there. Okay. 23.04 is there. Okay. This is the official uh, website here. You will get the latest. But sometimes they will not update the latest versions to the GitHub. Uh, sorry, not GitHub, Docker Hub. Okay. Suppose, see now. It created a container with this. Okay, so let me come out from this and sudo docker images. If you see, image is Ubuntu and the version is 0, 0 0.04. Okay, 72 MB only. See. The boot up is you are getting 72 MB only. And suppose if you give like this, if you are not mentioning the version here, default what version it will download? Let's see. Again, is downloading the Ubuntu latest version uh, already in use by container. Huh? Or oh, name, uh, same name I gave, no? that's why I'm getting the error. So let me take Ubuntu 1, okay. So done. Now you can see Docker images. See, this is the latest you are getting. The 77 MB and this is 20.04, 72 MB is there. Latest means what version? Let me go and uh, see. So do docker attach one one. Okay, if you see here, cat etc OS release. This is 22. So, Actually, in the website, 23 is also there, okay, but up to 22 only with uh, with a Docker Hub, okay. So, that only you are getting as a latest, okay, see 22042, LTS, long-term support. Fine. Next, what is the next concept here? Yeah, you can see the memory also. Okay, you can see the memory. I mean, how much CPU it is taking, how much RAM a process is taking, and all these calculations also you can see. So for this, one second, I need one more terminal uh, duplicate also. Let me take the duplicate terminal.
So in this duplicate terminal, what I'll do is sudo docker stats, stats, stats of Uban is running, right? Or Uban one right? Okay. I'm giving the container. Okay. See, it is showing the CPU and all these fields it is showing, all these columns. Okay. So now what I'll do here, here, same, same terminal only guys, duplicate. Okay, here, same machine only in two terminals I connected. Now, sudo docker exec without entering into the container and passing some uh, something. Okay, so then you can see here how much CPU and all how much memory it is taking. Okay, now it is showing zero here. Okay, so let me do some action, then you can see. Uh, without entering into the container, I'm giving something. Docker execute obun open, open one container. So what I want to do, I want to update apt apt get update. See in Ubuntu, if you want to uh, if you want to update the machine or if you want to install anything. Package manager is apt-get. In Red Hat, the package manager is M, Y U M. In Ubuntu, it is apt-get. So, so instead of M, I'm giving the apt-get here. Apt-get M, sorry, apt-get update hyphen Y. Now see, now you can check here. See CPU, memory, all these things it is shown. And again, CPU went to zero. Okay, see, so let me give one more time I'm giving this. Now you can see 67. Okay, now it came to zero. So like this, you can see how much CPU, how much memory, okay, or how much resources it is using. All these things you can see. Just nothing else. Just I executed. Uh, one command here to show you the uh, the memory and uh, RAM and I mean RAM memory all these things okay CPUs uh, all these things okay so for this we use command called stats is TATS okay so you can still so you can see the statistics of uh, I mean a task any task you can see statistics of task. Okay, how much CPU, how much RAM, and all these things it is taking. So you can calculate. So for this, we are using the command stats, S T A T S. Docker stats container name. Okay. Next. So here I give six stats. This is the thing. next one is events. Suppose if you want to see the events, events means as a log zone. In the background, what and all steps it is creating. See if uh, how we will create the container or uh, sudo docker run container name and image name, interact terminal image name. Right? This is a single command we are giving. Single command we are giving to create a container. But in the background, it will take a lot of steps there. Okay, it will follow a lot of steps in the background. If you want to see that background things, a background events or logs, you can see by using a event command. By using event command. Or events, not even. So now what I'll do here, uh, let me come out, control C, sudo docker events. If you give this command, V-E-N-T-S. Once you give this command, see the cursor is waiting for the events. So let me go and do some task. Then related to that task, it will show you the events. Okay, so what I'll do, let me create container only. 
one more container I'm creating. So dot docker run hyphen hyphen name obun ubuntu okay container name um what is the image ubuntu only I'll take existing image and interactive terminal If you don't want to enter into the container now, you can do detached browse. Okay. You okay? Fine. See, it created the container. This is the container ID, and it came out. It not entering into the container because we give the detachment. Now you go and see. See, these are the events. These are the events we have in the background to create a container. See what is the event here? First event, see, let, let's see one by one. Container created, this is the container ID. And image is Ubuntu, name equal to, container name is Ubuntu, okay? And something it is showing here, a reference image name, name equal to Ubuntu, so something, version 22.0. Okay, and the second step is network connected. First is container created, and after that is network connected. Okay, network bridge, all these things it will create. And third step is container started. See, there, here we are giving only single command, but in the background, see how many steps it is running. Container started. Okay, so like this. Suppose now, uh, let me attach to the container, okay? Sudo docker, I'm entering into the container, guys. Uh, UB, UN2, right? I'm entering into the container. Now see, few more events you will get here. See, up to here previously, right? Now see, container attached. Container resized. The height and width of the container is resized. Okay, and container, yeah, resize only two times it is given. Okay, see. Let me stop the container. So I'm giving the exit command here. Now you see. Network disconnected, container die. Okay, container die. And after that network disconnected. So, like this in the background event, it will show you guys. You can give the condition also. Not I don't want all the events. I want particular events only. You can give the condition also. How? Let me give. Let me come out. Control C. You can give the condition here. Sudo Docker events. Okay. Hyphen hyphen. Filter. Hyphen filter attribute we are using event equal to attach anything event equal to die event equal to attach event equal to connect anything you can give okay I want to only attach events only remaining I don't want so this is the condition I'm giving see it is waiting now let's go on let's go on start now the container is stopped actually Ubuntu Ubuntu Okay, so now what I'll do, I'll start again. See, started. Okay, now you go and see, see there is no events. The container is started, no, but there is no events. Why means we give the condition, not, I don't want all the events, I want attach event only. You attach related events only you want. So now let me attach to the Ubuntu. Okay. Now I, I entered into the Ubuntu container. Now you can see we got the event. Only that attach event only. You want. Now go and stop this. I, I'll give the exit. If you give exit command, the container will stop. Now see. You are not getting it because you give the condition. So you give the condition like this events, 
field that equal to the how many conditions you want, you can give like this. So if you want to see one hour events or two hours events, you can see, okay? So all one, one hour events, you can see like this. See. So last one hour, how many events are there? It is showing all the events. For that, again, you can give the condition also. So what is the use of this means? You can understand. Suppose you are creating a container. The container is not created. You are getting some issue. Then you can, if you, can, you can go and see the events, exactly where the problem. By seeing the events, you can understand. You can troubleshoot easily and you can understand in which, in which area we got the problem. Okay. So this is the thing. So events. That is clear. Any doubts? No, we don't. Okay. Next, volumes. Next concept is volumes. How volumes will work here? Suppose see, suppose this is one mission and this is another mission. Okay. Server one and the server two, two missions we have. Okay, so before this Docker and the volumes comes out, how in the real time, how they transferring the data from one server to another server? Network by using network file transfer. Okay, suppose here you have one file with the name VM tutes. Okay, so this file, so you need to transfer to, or you need to send to another server. How you're sending previously, we are using NFS network file transfer. This one we are using. Okay. Now also people are using it. But the problem with this is you want to transfer the file from one server to the another server. The problem with this is suppose see now the VM tools file you are transferring to the S2 mission. If the S2 mission is not available, something happened to the S2 server down or server crashed, something happened. Okay. Now what the uh, what this request will do? It will go back. This request will go back, right? And next, what the S one mission will do? S one S one mission will check whether the S one S two is in the network or not. So every time S one mission will check whether S two is in the network or not. Once it confirm. Okay, S2 is in the network. Then again, the S1 system will trigger. Again, it will send this VM tools file to S2 machine. So this is the problem. So S1 machine, every time it is checking S2 is available or not, S2 is available or not. Okay. And again, it is Okay, again it is sending, second time it is sending. So this is the problem with NFS. But whereas coming to, whereas coming to um, volumes in the Docker, 
Okay, here volume is nothing but one folder place. Volume is nothing but one folder. Okay. So, data is the volume name here. Volume is nothing but a special folder. The volume name should be data only, DATA. If you give our own names, it will not work. Okay. The volume name is data only. We'll create one folder in S1 mission. Okay. The folder name is or volume name is data. Inside that folder, whatever the data you want, VM tools or whatever the data, whatever the files you want, you can add. Okay, now here, now we are sending the data from container. Now it is not a system one, server one. It's a container one to the container two. Now how it will transfer the data, no? It will transfer the data directly from container one to container two. Suppose if the container one is not available, um, If the container one, sorry, the container two is not available, suppose the container two is in stopped state, exit state, then what these volumes will do now? It will wait here on. It will not go back. It will wait here until the container two is up and running. Okay. Once the container two is up and running, then immediately it will enter into the container two and it will add the data. Here it is not sending again second time and here it is it is not uh, checking whether the container 2 is available or not. Two things it is not doing. So it is waiting outside the door only. Okay, container 2 uh, it, here, uh, before the container 2 only, it is waiting outside the door. So, when now the container 2 is up and running, immediately it will enter into that. So, this is what the volume says. Okay. So, let me show you. I'll take here volume 1, volume 2 like that. Two containers I'll take. I have the commands here. I'm copying here instead of uh, typing. I'll explain. Okay. So, sudo docker run name of the container is volume. Okay. I'm taking the name of the container as a wall one. Okay. Any name you can take and interact with the terminal, this and all you know. And hyphen V volume also we need to create inside the while creating the container only, we need to create the volume. So, hyphen V and where you want to create the volume, it's your wish in your container. Where you want to create the volume, that is your wish. You, you can give the path. I want to create the volume in the home folder. See? And the volume name is data. Volume name always data only. It's a folder, directory, special directory. Okay? So, this is the volume I'm creating inside this container. Okay? By using an image called CentOS or Ubuntu, whatever you want, you can take. Okay? And... This bin bash is not required. Okay, center is not there. I think previously we deleted now. Now that center is image, it is pulling from the Docker Hub, and with that center is image, it launching a container. The container name is Wall One. Now you can go and check in the home folder. In the home folder, you can see data. It's a folder. See, it is a folder. It is D, D for directory, but it's not showing in blue color. Okay, in some ways, it will not show. Uh, okay, so directory, it's a directory. It's an empty directory. Okay, nothing is there. It's empty directory. 
now let me create one more container okay so one more container i will take now sudo docker run name of the container is wall2 okay container name i'm taking wall2 an interactive terminal and volumes from i'm using the attribute here volumes from volumes from wall1 i want the volumes from i'm cloning it's it, it's it's a, it's a kind of a cloning one. okay volumes from volume1 so in the volume1 container whatever the volume is there i'm cloning it okay so volumes from wall1 container and i need to take the permission also to edit that volumes okay so i need to take the permission also so hyphen hyphen privileged equal to true this also matter so i'm taking the permissions and i'm cloning the volumes from wall1 container and here i'm taking the ubuntu anything you can take mm, what happened sudo docker run Why is Sudo is not doing it? Oh, I'm in the inside the container. Let me come out. I'm inside the container, guys. Let me come out. Copy this. I'm inside the wall one. Okay, so now here I need to put it. Okay. So it created. Now come out from the wall two also. Docker PS. You can see wall one and wall two, both the containers are running. One is Ubuntu, one is another one is centers. Okay. Now what I'll do, I'll enter into the wall one. Volume one container I'm entering. Go to the home data volume. Okay. Here I'm adding one file with the name we know. Okay. Now I'll come out from here. Now I'll go to wall two. Okay, sudo docker branch walls wall two. Okay, now if you go to home and data folder, here you can see. So volume you will get and uh, the data, whatever the data is there in the volume one. Okay, volume one container, same it is there in the volume two. And vice versa also you can. Okay, now what I'll do is, um, to do Docker, I'm stopping, until I'm stopping wall two, okay? Wall two is stopped. Okay, so wall two is stop. You can see wall two is not there. Stop. Okay. Now let me enter into wall one. Okay. Home data. Okay. Here, what I'll do? I'm adding one one folder. I'm creating here. The folder name is DevOps folder. Okay, DevOps. Folder. Now come out from this and sudo docker start wall two container. Previously I it stopped. Now I started. Now attach to wall two container. Okay, and go to home data folder. And check, see, the works folder is there. See how it is syncing immediately. Okay, so this is how the volumes will run.
ओके मैं क्लियर एनी डाउट्स नेक्स्ट वन सो वी कैन क्रिएट अ कस्टम इमेजेस आल्सो भी वी कैन क्रिएट और वोन कस्टम इमेज ओके एंड दैट इमेज यू कैन यू कैन पुश इट एस यू कैन पुश इट टू डॉकर हबर्ट हाउ See what is the main first we need to understand what is the main purpose of creating the custom images. Suppose let's take an example. First I will explain theory and after that I will show you practical. Okay. Uh, suppose I created one custom image. Okay. Custom image zero one. Ah uh, okay no no. Let me talk. Suppose I launched one container. Okay. In that container, actually, my target is I want to deploy something or I want to do something. Okay, I want to deploy one application. For that, I launched one container. In that container, uh, container or mission, anything you can take. Okay, so in that mission, uh, for the deployment, I installed a lot of packages, a lot of supporting files, everything I did, a lot of configurations. Okay, all these things I did. Suppose ten packages I installed, and ten configuration files I modified. Okay, like this, lot of things I do, lot of things I did in that mission, and finally I deployed the application, and the application is deployed successfully, and everything is finished. Okay, so application deployed, everything is done, and after that my work is finished. I remove the mission, finish. Okay, project also released. Let's take project also released. So I remove that mission. And tomorrow, I mean in future, I'm getting again same record. Yes, definitely in the real time you will get the same record. Okay, so you have to deploy again the application. Okay, so again you need to do. You need to install ten packages, ten configuration files, all this setup you need to do again. Okay, so again, it's a time waste, right? Time is equal to money, right? Sometimes we'll forget what we did in previously six months back in that mission. Okay, so this is the problem. In the Docker containers, what we will do? Right? We we can create our own custom images. So again, can you please? So the, okay so here whatever you installed whatever you configured whatever you deploy whatever you created all those things you can save with your name that was a narendra image one like this you can save with your name and that image if you want you can upload to docker registry also again so you created the image and you uploaded to docker registry also now sudhir downloaded that narendra image he downloaded that image narendra image and with narendra image sudhir he uh, he launched one container so whatever is there in that image everything sudhir also will get See, instead of doing everything the everything from the scratch, he is using, he is using the technology exactly. Okay, now Sudhir he did some more changes. I he added few more uh, actions or a few modifications he did in that. Okay, another ten packages he installed or something he did in that. So again, now Sudhir he will save that whatever he did. He is going to save again with Sudhir. Custom image with his name. 
that image he is uploading again into the docker registry and now anyone can download sudhir image so this is the advantage of custom images only one time is enough you can use that image how many times you want Okay, so you in take one container, we'll install Git, Maven, Jenkins, Sansible, Docker, Kubernetes, everything we installed. Okay, after completing the course, after completing the course, if you remove the instance, then again, you need to install, right? For new instance, again, you need to install the Git, GitHub, Maven, Jenkins, Sansible. Instead of that, if you save all those things with, a, with your name, Okay, with that image, you can launch a new container now. In that container, everything you will get. How nice it is. So this is the advantage of a custom image works. Okay, now um, let me show you practical. PS hyphen A, uh, let me take this container. Open one is there now, where is that? Open one, okay. So I'm taking this container, okay. Open one hmm. Docker attach UB UN one, okay. This is the container, okay. Now inside this container, what I'll do, I'll do some actions, okay. Some actions means, um, is there anything else? Nothing is, nothing is here, um. I'll create one file T1, T2, T3, three files I created. And I'll create one folder, sample folder. Okay. So um, I, um first let me update the mission also. I'm updating the mission also. Sudo sudo and here. Um what is that? Apt apt is directly apt is enough actually. If it is new version directly can use apt only. Apt uh update happen by so i'm updating this is also one action okay and here default v editor will not work see v editor is not there you can install v editor here okay so add install va or vam the confirmation see v editor is installing Okay, like this, what and all you want, you can do. Suppose I'm installing the git. Okay, so what is that? Yum, no, sorry. Apt install git. See, all these things, I'm, I'm working in this container. So working means we'll install, you'll we'll configure, we'll create the files, delete the files, all these actions you will do, right? So all these actions I did here. Now I want to save this. Instead of after completing the work, normally we will delete the container, right? Instead of that, first we will save as an image. After that, you can if you want, you can delete. Let me save this, come out from this container. How to save this? Sudo Docker Docker. Commit. Commit is the command. Yes. Commit in the git we have commit, right? Commit means permanently saving. No, same meaning for here. Okay. Docker commit. What do you want to commit? You want to commit this one. UB UN Uban, right? Uban Uban 2 or it is a one. I forgot one second, guys. Which container I'm using? You be you be you in one one only right? Otherwise, yes, we not one one only one. Ah, one. Okay. So if you give the names like this now, we get definitely get the confidence. So container name guys. In which container you perform the actions? Okay, that container only you need to save. So I'm committing the one one container. 
uh, you can give name also here actually I forgot uh, name also you can give directly let me give the name also directly one second oh, i think it created already image it created one second so docker images it created the image also i don't want this let me give the name also name is not there later also you can give the name but i want to give at a time mm. so do docker remove image you know right how to remove the image rmi and the image okay now the image is removed now i will create again so do docker commit one one and you can give here hyphen t okay tag name okay tag name is uh, the image name okay uh, image name you can give like this so image name you need to give like this only does the username whatever the username you created in the docker hub in the docker hub whatever the the username you created i asked you to create an account in the docker hub right whatever the username is there with that username only we need to create the image here why means you are going to upload this custom image to the docker hub right so with this under this username only you are going to upload so that username we need to give so here my in my account my username is vinod k 070 so what i'll do the image name also i need to give like this Vinod K 070. This is the username. Okay. This is the username. Now, in this username, now the image name is uh, the username or the image name is suppose I'll take like this. Um, one, one name, Ivan. No? I will I'll take image name as I1. Okay. And version also you need to give. Username followed by image name. Okay. So image name, let me take otherwise I'll take uh, Sudhir image I took. Okay. Sudhir IMG. Okay. So, so the image, image name, and the version also you need to give. Okay. So version, suppose V1. Actually, this is the image name, actually. The Sudhir image comes under the repository. I'll explain that later. It's a confusion topic. I'll explain that. Okay. The, Im the image name we need to give like this. Okay. Um, and I type on T, it's a tank. Mm -hmm. One second, yes. Docker commit container name and the image name directly image name. No need of giving any this thing. No need of giving anything. Okay. So successfully. So do Docker images. See, this is the. So this is the custom image. We need to create the custom image like this. Okay. So we are going to upload this custom image to the Docker Hub, right? So we need to give like this one. Username followed by the image name and the version. Okay. So V1 version or any, any it's your own version names you can. And this is the image ID and see 253 MB. Actually, this is Ubuntu only. No, 72 MB you will get Ubuntu. Ubuntu default. But now see 253 MB is there. Why means? Inside that, we installed uh, VIM, we updated the Ubuntu mission and we installed the gate, 
lot of things we did not. That's why the size is increased. So this is the image. Now this image we are going to upload to the Docker registry. Okay, how to upload to the Docker registry? Sudo Docker upload. Oh, no, no, no. Login. Login. Login is the command like this we need to give. It is asking the username. So username is vinodk070 and the password is wait. So login succeeded. So just now I logged in into my Git, uh, not Git, uh, Docker Hub. Now I need to push sudo docker push this one, copy, paste, and version also mandatory, guys. Okay, v1. Now see, now it is pushing to the Docker Hub. See, it pushed successfully. Now go and refresh this uh, account. Now you can see here, see Sudhir image. Okay. Now with this image, you can you can download this image if you want again. How you will download the image? Sudo docker pull. Here also they're giving the command here. You can uh, see, you can click on this and you can see, you can here, you can copy. You can copy this if you want. Okay, otherwise you can copy from here also. We have all that. Wait, wait. So it will show you already it is there. Image is updated because I only created them. With me, it is there already. Now, with this, I'm going to launch a container. Run. Okay. I can have the name of the container. Suppose uh, V1 is the container name. Okay. And the image interactive terminal and the image name is this one. See? With that image, I launched a container. Now you can see here. See? See that sample file t1, t2, t3 is there, and you have the uh, the editor also it is working, okay, and Git version is also there, okay. All these things are there. I installed all these things. Now I I'm I want to do one more. Uh, so here I am doing I'm using all these things, okay. Now I am removing t3, t3 file I'm removing. Small action I performed here. Something I did here. You can add something you want. You can remove something you want. So now I remote T3. Now what I'll do? I'll save this image as my with my name. I will save this image. Okay. How again? Sudo Docker commit. Uh, what is this name? V1. Uh, V1 right? Uh, V1. Container name. V1. And image name. With what image name you want to your Docker Hub ID, username, followed by suppose now we know the IMG and the version is V2. Okay. Now sudo Docker images. You see the images? See, we have the image. Now this image you can again you can upload to Docker. So everything is stored. Okay, everything is everything is storing. Whenever you, after hundred years, if you want to use this, you can use this. This image you can launch a container. Everything whatever is there in that image, everything you will get in that container. Guys, you're getting it.
this week. Any doubts so far? Actually, see, let me upload this one also. I'll explain one more point here. So now, sudo docker push this one, okay? I'm pushing this also. You know the Under the, okay, separate image it is taken. Fine. See, this is a previous one. So separately it is taken actually. <clears throat> No, let me show you. See, actually, uh, we know that 070 is the username. Like in the GitHub, we have the username. Same way here also. And whatever the image we are calling, no, this is not an image. This is, this we know the IMG and Sudhir IMG is not an image name. It is a repository. Inside the repository, you will get the V1 is there now. This is the image name. Under the under the Vinod image, a not image, is a repository. Okay. Like in the, in the in the GitHub also, we have no username. Inside the username, you have the repository. Inside the repository, you have the files and folders. Here also same username. Okay. Inside this username, you have the repository name. Inside this repository, this is the image actually. This is the image name. V3. But we are calling it as version. No, it's an image. See, if you see, if you use sudo docker images, here also it is showing, see, repository. This Fedora is a repository. But initially, we, for understanding, I, I call it as a images. Okay, a repository. Inside this, you will have the images. So, meaning is same only, guys. But inside that repository, you have the images. Fedora 1, Fedora 2, Fedora 3. Fedora is a repository inside that number of fields. Okay. So now what I'm doing under the Vinod image repository only. Okay. I'm create I'm giving one more also. V3 also, V3 image also I'm putting. See, created and I'll push this. Let me go back to the Vinod. See, two V3 is there. So under this repository, two images. I created two images three minutes ago, just now. This one. Now, if you click on this, inside this, it will show you this is the image. Okay. And uh, here inside this image, it's uh, nothing is there. No? A few things only we have. So what and all layers we have in the inside the image, it will show. Username repository is the repository name inside that image. So we can uh, create automate. Now here manually we are doing all these things, right? We can automate uh, to create the custom images. So that we will see 
in tomorrow's class. Okay. So any doubt so far, you can ask. Commitments using Jenkins. Sorry.